I appreciate that wonderful introduction. I get the privilege to travel a lot of places with your pastor, and uh, he gets me in a lot of trouble, so <laughs> I guess he's trying to make up for all of those times that uh, he sent pictures to my wife, and, uh, and I've had to pray to stay out of divorce court, and, uh, but I sure do love Brother Tyler Golden. He is a friend, and uh, I love his family. I love his church, and uh, I do count it as this church being a sister church to Central Baptist Temple, and uh, we are an hour down the road, and I love when we can all come together. There's been a few times that we've been able to come together, and it was such a blessing to see that our choirs can get together, and we can sing together about a God that has been so good to us. We can praise him tonight. I I was thinking about in Acts chapter 2, that phrase in Acts chapter 2 has been on my heart for several weeks now. It says that they were in one accord in one place. I'm glad that there's still some preachers that can get together in one accord, but I'm thankful there's some churches that can get together in one accord. And he said if you can get together in one accord in one place, you're liable to see the power fall, and that's what we need in the day. We don't need another church building. We don't need another place. We need him tonight to come down and sit upon us. And it's been a wonderful week. And uh, Brother, Brother Tyler has had me to come on Wednesday night after two home runs have been hit on Monday and Tuesday. And it uh, been much better if we'd have been on Monday and just laid down a bunt and let them come on in. And uh, you Mets fans know what I'm talking about to the Braves fans in here. Amen. I done grieve the spirit now. He tore slap up now. But I'm so thankful for this church and for your prayers. There's no telling where we'd be tonight if it wasn't for the Lord and wasn't for our brothers and sisters that can hold up our hands in the dark valleys of life. And uh, what, a, what a Savior we serve. I want you to take your Bible tonight, turn to 1 Kings chapter number 19. This has been burning in my heart. I'm sorry, chapter 18. I've been praying for a long time that God would give me a word, not a message. I've got many outlines in my filing cabinets, and I used to have them on my iPad until I lost 278 messages on there, but that was a blessing. (laughs) But I find that there's a lot of things that it could preach that would we'd get a shout and an amen and hallelujah. I've preached it a few times. But I want to bring a word tonight. And I believe, I've prayed, I've asked God, give me a word that can help us tonight. This is where the Lord led me to. And I want us to look in chapter 18, verse 41. The Bible says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, For there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. We all know the story here in chapter 18. A very powerful thing has just happened on Mount Carmel. Here it is, Elijah has prayed, and fire has come down upon uh, there on the altar at Mount Carmel. 
Then we find that 450 of Baal's prophets uh, are killed there and people are bowing and worshiping the Jehovah God, the only God, the true God there. And there we find that it would be real easy after seeing the fire fall and now a, a, a country that was a idolatry, a Baal worship and all the things ungodly was going on. It had been real easy to say, boy, we've had a great time and the power just come down, but they are still in a famine. There's still a dry time and they know that they need the rain to come down. And Elijah tells Ahab, I hear the abundance of rain and Ahab, he goes to a feast, but we find that Elijah goes to the Father. He goes right back to that same place uh, where the fire has come down. He realizes if God sent the fire, he can certainly send the rain. And we know the story there. Uh, he begins to tell the servant to go out and to look. And he goes out seven times, or goes out one time and tells him to keep going out. He sees nothing, but on the eighth time, he says there's a little hand that looks like a man's hand, a little cloud there, uh, and the rain is on the the way. Now a lot of times when we look at this situation, when we look at this passage of scripture, we zero in on this man named Elijah. And we know from the book of James that he is just like us. There was nothing uh, extraordinary other than God had his hand on Elijah. But a lot of times we overlook about this servant here. And a lot of us could probably identify more with the servant here uh, than we can with Elijah. We realize that there's probably not too many preachers and pastors in here. Uh, not many. Uh, we, we find that we've got men of God that know how to get a hold of God, that bring the word of God. But here is a servant uh, that is trying to be obedient, uh, trying to be obedient to the master. Uh, and the master gives him one job. I want you to go look out there. Uh, and look upon the sea and tell me if you see anything. And he goes over and over again. And I can identify tonight sometimes with a servant. There's times we go through things and it seems like we go and we see nothing. We see nothing more than we see anything. But I'm here to say tonight, even as a servant in a dry land that we live in, in a land where we know wickedness is all around us, I'm glad there is a God that can send rain tonight. I'm glad for us tonight. We just need to keep looking up and keep going for the glory of God. This little servant is dependent on the man of God and what he said. The man of God has said, I hear an abundance of rain. It has not rained for three and a half years. These are dark days. I mean, you can imagine in the life of Elijah, he has been down at the brook, the cutting place there, and there God has fed him with the ravens. We find he sends him in the drought. He sends him down to a widow's house to sustain him there, and he sees the great miracle over and over again. We find that God is blessing Elijah, but there is a little servant there that is going through those dark days. No doubt, just like our life, sometimes life can be a roller coaster of events. One day you're getting fed by the ravens The next day you're wondering if there's going to be enough meal in the barrel We live in a day where it can be exhausting serving I'm looking out tonight. I know it's Wednesday night. Some of you have worked hard. Some of you are trying to feed your family in, the, in this day that we live with inflation going up and the gas prices going up. But let me tell you, there is a devil. There is an enemy uh, just like Ahab was in that day. There is a pressure on every family in here. Uh, there's a pressure on every preacher in here. Uh, there's a pressure on your church and our church tonight. Uh, but I'm here to say, uh, just keep serving. Uh, just keep looking. Uh, God said the rain is on the way. Sometimes life can be like a roller coaster. We got to be willing to go through those times. Allow God to renew our strengths tonight. I want to just preach on this thought tonight that's on my heart. As this servant keeps going out seven times. Looking upon the sea, he comes back and he says, there's nothing. But he does not quit. He keeps going. He could have went the first time and said, you know what? I don't see anything. This is crazy. I'm going home. We're going to die. But he kept going. And tonight, I look out and I see some families, even though you're struggling tonight, 
even though it seems like it's a roller coaster of life, it seems like the pressures and all the things that you're faced with tonight, you continue to come back to the house of God to get a word from God. Here it is, that servant heard Elijah say, he's never seen Elijah be wrong. When he's went up on Mount Carmel, he knows he's doing business with God. And he said, the man of God said, there's abundance of rain and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep coming to church. I'm going to keep coming to the place. I'm going to keep looking out. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep going until I feel a raindrop hit my head. I want to preach on this thought. There is hope on the horizon. There is hope tonight on the horizon. I don't care what Fox News has said today. I don't care what CNN News has said. I don't even care what Newsmax and all the internet says today. I don't care what Facebook says. I don't care what you've looked about Instagram. Instagram. I know one thing. God said there is an abundance of rain. The Lord that we serve is still on the throne tonight. He's in charge. And you can look out on the horizon tonight. You may not see anything, but keep going because there is hope. Hope on the horizon. I'll give you a couple thoughts tonight from this text, this servant. You see, we got hope tonight in the promises of God. God will let you hear some things along the way. God will give you a message just like Monday night. That message of heaven. We've heard about heaven all of our life, all of our Christian walk. Man, my heart is longing for heaven uh, day by day. Uh, but isn't it wonderful to come down to the house of God uh, and hear it one more time? Uh, let our ears hear the promises. Hey, that is going to be a reality one day. I'm glad that God lets us hear some things along the way. You see, the ear of faith hears what the I of flesh cannot see. Boy, God's let us hear some things along the way in life. We have hope in the promises of God. I think about the comfort of being settled in the promises of God. There's nothing like having that peace and that promise. Here it is, Elijah. He has got a word from God many times. Uh, he got a word down at the brook uh, that the ravens were going to feed him. Uh, he got a word uh, from the Lord that the widow was going to sustain him. Uh, he's got a word now uh, that fire was going to come down from heaven. Uh, and he's got another word tonight that rain is on on the way. Let me tell you, child of God, this book is filled up with promises tonight. We've heard it over and over again, but let the eyes of faith in our heart realize there is comfort in being settled in the promises of God. We have his precious word tonight. There's a lot of things that we hear that we, don't, we can't believe. But there's some, something about when you hear that promise that sustains you along the way. You see, Elijah had been God's instrument in bringing the drought to the nation. And we find that the, the rain had stopped but now the Baal's prophets are dead. The people have repented. And he knows that, that the Lord is ready uh, to send the rain. Now I'll say tonight, we live in a dry land. We live in a land uh, that is dry tonight. Uh, let me tell you, there's churches that are dry tonight. There are Christians that are dry tonight. Uh, there are families that are dry tonight. Uh, there are marriages that are dry tonight. Uh, but I'm here to say God blesses what he puts together tonight. Uh, and you keep looking out on the sea tonight. Uh, you Keep hearing the promises of God. Uh, recite them in your heart. Uh, trust Him with all your heart and let God yeah. rain down on you tonight. Yeah. I find that over my life, all sorts of things that I've went through, I've seen God give me a word in the season that I was in. Now listen tonight. I don't know where you're at, but I know where I've been and I know where I'm at tonight. And we've got to learn to start getting an ear for where God can speak to us. Some of the greatest words that I've ever heard has been in the darkest times of my life. I thought about you go to chapter 19 and I don't want to run too far ahead. But we find Elijah is underneath a juniper tree. He is struggling there. He wants God to take his life. And there we find that the Lord said he's not in the great earthquake. He's not in this. He said, I'm in the still small voice. 
Christians, it's dark tonight. It's dry tonight. But that's just an opportunity for God to recite some things in the ears of his children tonight to give us a word that might sustain us and settle us in the promises of God. Over the year, I think about our testimony and my salvation. God gave a word in that dark time of my life. He changed my life and gave me an ear for his voice. That's important tonight. Elijah had an ear for the, uh, the word of God. He had an ear for those promises. And tonight, we ought to get our ears uh, towards heaven tonight. God, I need a word in this hour that I'm in. If there's ever been a time that the church ought to gather in the Jubilees and the Sunday mornings and the Wednesday and the revivals, uh, we come together to get a word. I love singing. Uh, boy, the choir's knocked it out of the park all week, uh, but there is nothing like uh, when you're in that dry place uh, as that servant was uh, to hear what the man of God says, uh, to hear what God's give him, uh, to give you that word that'll settle you. It is a perfect word, a little testimony of my own, and I thought about this the past couple of days. I was from Gaston County. 39 years I lived there, was saved and married my wife. We've been married 28 years. Started pastoring a little small church on a hill. When we first went, it was my wife, and their little kids, and about two families. And then you know how all young preachers are. When you get, you get to church, you think, man, it's going to go. Poof. We're going to be in a building project next week. <laughs> but God has to take you by the brook. He has to take you down the widow's house before he ever takes you to the palace. That's the way the Lord does it. But man, I've been pastoring and working full time for five years. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm preaching my guts out and it seems like nothing is happening. It seems like every time I go to church, every time I look out on the sea, I come back and there's nothing. And let me tell you, that's a very hard place to be. You feel discouraged. You feel distressed. Uh, you're depressed and you begin to doubt if you're even doing what God called you to do. That's where I was at. My pastor was a man of prayer man that knew Percy Ray, knew about prayer, and boy, I watched his life. And I'd go talk to him, and I'd tell him how bad things were, and before I left, he done lifted me up, and Amen. go pray, go find your place. He got to talking about rock altars and stuff, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. Down at the church, I went down the back of the property, and walked down a little path, and I took me a rock there, and I put that rock down, and I cried out to God, and I did it one day, and come back and guess what there's nothing went back the next day and got in that prayer place put another rock there nothing I don't know how many days went by but I kept going down there and being faithful and I remember going down there and I got my Bible out one day and this story come to, right to my mind it said uh, about Elijah sending that servant out seeing nothing uh, but there was an abundance of rain coming and I said God on that rock altar that evening I said God you're going to send the rain I'm going to believe what you say I believe your word yeah. well God give me a promise now I don't know how many weeks I don't know if it was months. I wish I wrote all that down. God had put this jubilee in my heart. I love jubilee. For two years, I prayed, God, you line some things up. God, you give me the men. I didn't know nothing about pastoring. I didn't have no pastors in my family, no preachers in my family. I was figuring all this out by myself, me and the Lord. And I remember going and, 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 and saying, Lord, you line all this up. God began to line up. Brother Heath was one of the first ones in my Jubilee meeting. And I began to line up. I had two preachers each night. I didn't know, I didn't know the order you're supposed to have one preacher, you know, the younger preacher first and then the, the one that hit out of the I didn't know none of that stuff. <laughs> I had preachers calling me saying, am I going first or last? I tell them, no, you're going first, and they'd get mad. <laughs> why, is this little, why, why is this little preacher going for I am? I'm the senior man. But I was totally following God. Amen. Through Brother Heath, I met a guy named Greg Lentz. Never even knew him. 
All I'd heard about him, never, I never went to no youth conferences. I, I, I learned all this stuff after. Man, we had a conference Monday night. It was good, good preaching. Tuesday, man, it was, it was wonderful. God was helping us. Wednesday, man, it was fantastic. But something happened on Thursday. Brother Heath, I believe, was there that night. He got up and he preached. He'd preached this message before. A lot of people had heard the message about sin in the rain. And he got to preaching. But see, God had already put that promise in my heart. And it had already stirred in my heart what he'd done down at that rock altar. And what God had done said, there's rain on the way. And on that night, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just in me. But man, I'm telling you what, I not only seen the promise, I believe the promise. And in the midst of that service, God did something that I've never got over. We went about three weeks after that. I've still not got over it. And I thought about, boy, God puts a promise in your heart. You've got to believe it. I'm going to tell you what, in that service, Brother Heath and some others said, I've never seen you run like that. I'm telling you what, the hand of God hit me that night. They say I took off and hit. I've never run like that before in my life. But on that night, there was a word that I heard from God. And not only did I hear the word of God, I seen the hand coming on the sea. And God did something in my soul. There's comfort being settled in the promises of God. Elijah went to the father. Ahab went to the feast. You see that Elijah was humble and, man, he was earnest about praying. He was uh, in accord with the Lord. He was persistent. But one thing that I see about Elijah was that he was expectant. Now, God's give some of you some words that you've heard. You need to start coming to the house of God expecting him to do it. I can't say that night I come down to the church house, I didn't know what he was going to preach, but I was expecting God to do something. I said, God, I'm tired of this dread, dry deadness. I, I'm tired of the same old thing. God, I can't do this by myself. God, if you don't send the rain, uh, we're all going to die here. Uh, and in that time, God honored the being expected of the promises that God had gave. If we're ever going to see real success in our life, we got to learn to pray with expectancy. Yeah. Hey. Believing that God can do it. Yes. This year, God had really put that, I believe, God in my heart. And boy, I've went through some dark things, this, some tests and trials. But every time that I go through that dark time and that dryness, uh, I come out of my prayer closet saying, God, I don't see it, but I believe it. Uh, and tonight is God's people. We need to say, God, I don't see it, but I sure do believe it tonight. Yeah. You see, there is hope in the presence of God. There's hope in the power of God. Here it is in this text. We find that it said in his servant, he told him, go up, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass that the seventh time he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Yes. Yeah. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot. Get thee down the rain, and the rain stop thee not. We find that he sought the Lord in prayer, but here he's strengthened by the power of God. You see, this servant is looking to, uh, a, uh, looking to uh, Elijah, and he's saying, Elijah... I know what you said, but I just don't see it yet. And you can imagine as he went up day by day, he's looking out on the sea and he's coming back with nothing. But that day he goes up and he looks out and he goes and gets one of them and he looks again. He says, man, that sure does look like a cloud. It's not real big, but there I think the brains are coming. And he goes back and he shares it. You see, God will let you hear some things. God certainly let you see some things too. Now, I, I've been coming here nine years now. A lot of Jubilees, a lot of revivals, a lot of Oasis conferences. But I've been seeing some things that's happened over these nine years. 
This is a different place. You know why this is a different place? Because some of y'all have heard some things. But not only have you heard some things, you've seen some things. I don't know what God has in store for Church Street Baptist Church. But I know that you've been seeing some things. And it may not be big things. Uh, it may be small things like a hand. But you've heard some things and now you're seeing some things. Uh, and things are beginning to come together. Uh, and pieces are beginning to come all together. Let me tell you, for seven years in Sanford, North Carolina, I heard some things. Uh, God gave me a vision. Uh, God gave me some things uh, that I heard. Uh, but boy, I'm here to say, not only have I heard some things, uh, I've seen God put some things together tonight. Uh, and let me tell you what he said to me. Uh, there's an abundance of rain coming uh, to Church Street. There's abundance of rain coming to Sanford. Uh, we got to believe it because we've seen it. Now we love to see big things. But God's not interested many times us seeing big things. He wants us to praise him over the small things. Back at that church and first church I pastored I kept looking for big things to happen. And it left me discouraged. But Tyler, it'll leave you discouraged. We want big things. You know, we want somebody to drop a million dollars in our bank account and let us shout. We want somebody to write the check to pay off the whole debt. But I found out it ain't that way. God uses those small, those little $5 bills he uses. He takes and gets her eyes to looking on the small things. Elijah knew about the small things. Here it is, the ravens are coming and they're dropping meat to him. I mean, that's an unusual miracle in itself. But he's seeing him drop just what he needs. And then he goes to the widow's house and he's not getting a full course meal, but there's enough food to sustain him day by day through that small handful. Church Street, you've been seeing some small things. Back at the church, I pastored. God did that miracle. And that service, it changed the, the whole church. I was bivocational, and through that meeting, God began to do some things. Went full time. On paper, it didn't look like it was ever going to happen. But you know what? God was taking little things. Blessing. Started being, instead of me praying in the rock altar, there was two or three guys. When I left there, there was at least 30, 40 men that would get around that rock every Sunday. We saw great miracles. A man that we prayed for for 10 years, his wife would come in. He was, I'm talking about, he was lost as could be. I talked to him, witnessed to him. He knew how to get away from me. But every Sunday morning, she'd lift up that hand in Sunday school and say, would you pray for Jimmy? That God would save him. She was faithful to do that. Boy, that little old hand that went up every week, I got a burden over him and the men begin to get a burden over him and we begin to pray. I remember going there one last time and, and, and Jimmy left out of there and, and I told his wife, I said, I'm not interested in knocking doors down, uh, but if Jimmy ever wants to talk to me, uh, you pick up that phone and you call me no matter where I'm at, I'm going to come. He ran from us, but he couldn't run from God. We got around that rock altar. By that time, there's a man that drove a big old rock. It shut down a 5,000-pound lift. He said, I can still get it there. He put it in a little backhoe uh, and drove it for two miles and dropped that rock right there where all the pile of rocks were that I'd been going down there for almost a year, uh, laying those rocks down. Uh, and now men are getting around there, and we're calling out Jimmy's name. I'll never forget it. I'm getting ready to go to dinner, and I get a phone call. It's his wife. Pastor, Jimmy wants to talk to you bad. I'll be right there. I remember walking up on those steps. 
Man, I'm telling you what, the Holy Ghost was hovering over that, that house. I never felt a presence of God like I did that day. And I thought back, that little old hand that was raised up, boy, I'm glad God's in those little hands, those little hands that give, those little hands that pray, those little hands that praise. Boy, God's interested in those little things tonight. Walked in that house and Jimmy's weeping. He said, oh God, I need to be saved. I said, Jimmy, get down right here. Let's call on God. And God saved him in power. He became one of my key men. Went home to be with the Lord just last year during COVID. But I'm going to tell you what. I saw the miracle and the power of God through prayer. You see, God's letting you see some things. He's letting you hear some things. But God will do this as well. He'll let you say some things. Now, look at the text here. The servant comes back and he says, there's a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot. Get thee down, that, that the rain stop thee not. Here's the little servant. Elijah says, you go tell Ahab. Now, can you imagine that? Ahab's a mean man. The drought's been there. But boy, I can imagine there's some excitement in him. Elijah's already told Ahab to get off. Ahab goes to the feast. Elijah goes to the father. The servant goes to look. Why they're praying, why they're looking, why they keep going. Here it is, God's getting ready to downpour upon that land. And he tells the servant, go say some things. You know what I found? That when the Lord lets you hear some things, uh, you begin to believe it. And with confidence, you begin to say some things in boldness for Christ. I'd have loved to have been there that day when he told Ahab, you better get to going, buddy. The rains are coming. I believe if he had umbrellas in that day, he'd have put his rain suit on and umbrella and said, boy, the drops are coming. You better get on your horse. You better get out of here. You know, some of you have heard some stuff and you've seen some stuff. It's time that we say some things. Too many times that we shut down in the hard times of life when that is the greatest time to lift up our voice and say, praise God for the raindrops. Praise God for the rain. Thank you, Lord, for the abundance that you're about to send. This servant was dependent on the man of God that he had got that word from God. Now I'll say this tonight. Your pastor gives you a word. There's a lot of guys just give you sermons. Fancy outlines. This man gives you a word. I've been around him enough to know he gives you a word. You've heard some things. Church tonight, I know what you've been praying because guess what? I'm praying with you tonight. And I don't know how God's going to do everything, but let me tell you, I've been hearing abundance of rain for a long time, getting ready to come out of church street. And let me tell you, you may not be seeing the big thing come, but there's some little things that's been happening around here. God's giving you some little things tonight. Not only are you seeing some things and you're hearing some things, now it's time that we get up and start shouting, hey, we believe you, God, that you're about to dump the rain on this place. See here the comfort of being settled by the promises, the comfort of being seeking the Lord in prayer, and the comfort of being strengthened by the power of God. Yeah. Elijah was comforted in chapter 19. He was comforted by being supported by the presence of God. He goes underneath the juniper tree. Now think about this. The servant's been dependent on the man of God. Now the man of God's underneath the juniper tree. And the man of God's going to have to depend on the servant angel to sustain him and take care of him. We know what James says, that he's, he was just like us. It wasn't nothing special. I'll be quick to say, you know what, there's nothing special about me. 
What makes us special tonight is what it said there, the hand of God was on Elijah. And he outrun Ahab's chariot. That little hand that come off the sea, not only did it bunt, uh, abundance of rain begin to fall, but that hand of God was on Elijah. And now we find in chapter 19, the hand of God is still on Elijah, but he's there and the servant angel's taking care of him. Tells me tonight we're in this thing together. We can all get tired and weary. And we need one another. Somebody come play the piano tonight. I want to do one thing and I'm going to be done. Yesterday I was going through a box of papers and this little sheet fell out. I found this years ago when I was at that church. A little article I read offline. It's a history of a little church in Swan Quarter, North Carolina. The Providence United Methodist Church. They call it the church that was moved by the hand of God. The history says this, that in 1874, members of the Methodist faiths of Swan Quarter Porter, had decided to take and try to find a permanent church building. They looked all over the town and this little church was right there at the, the ocean. A lot of hurricanes come through and things. So they, they found a piece of land right in the center of Swan Quarter. It was the highest elevated piece of land. But they said that the man that owned it was Sam Sadler. They went to Sam Sadler and they said this. They said, we want to buy your land to build our church. He said, no way. He would not sell it to them. So they began to look around and they found a piece of land that somebody had gifted them that land a couple blocks from where they wanted it. They said something real strange happened. They had built those, uh, that church that had some brick piers and they built the church on the piers and as soon as they got it enclosed, they'd already started meeting in the church, having service. September 16th, 1876. On the eve of the dedication of the church, a storm broke out. Hurricane brewing. Rains begin to fall. They said as the rains begin to fall and the wind begin to blow, the next morning, September 17th, 1876, they said the waters had reached so high, the tide had come in so far, the winds and the water caused that church to lift up off those brick piers. This is what they said. They said the church began to float down the road. It bumped, it got to the corner, it bumped into the general store owned by George Creedle. There it went down the road. It took a sharp right, headed down the road about two city blocks. It reached the corner of what was now Church Street. It moved slightly off course, went across an intersection, and it landed in the center of Sam Sadler's property. <laughs> the exact site where they believed that was the hand of God. Sam Sadler, he said, that has to be the hand of God. The providential hand of God has moved that church. He said, here is the deed to the property. A year later, they dedicated the church, called it Providence United Methodist Church. Church Street. It went down Church Street. I don't know what the providential hand of God is going to do here. But I do know this. We have heard some things. And we've seen some things. And let us start learning to say some things. We believe you, God. We believe you hold the future tonight. And I'm going to keep praying. 
I'm going to keep looking and I'm going to keep going to his hand rest upon me. We need the hand of God tonight. I wonder how many in this place would say, God, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep praying. And I'm going to keep looking because I know the abundance of rain is on its way. Brother Tyler, don't quit. Keep praying. Keep going. Keep looking. The abundance of rain is coming. I believe with all my heart. The best is yet to come. What have you seen? What have you heard? What will you say tonight? Boy, God's been good. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, for your precious word. God, your precious promises. Lord, you know exactly what you're going to do in this place. God, as we met here this week for Jubilee, God, every single night, God, you give us a word. God, you give us a stirring. And Lord, there's some families, God, I believe they've looked. And Lord, they're discouraged tonight. God, would you do something in their heart that they'll go one more time. God, that they'll keep praying, they'll keep looking. And God, let us believe you tonight. Because God, we know you're seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, put your hand on this church. Put your hand on my dear friend. Touch his pastor, God. Touch his wife. God, touch his children. God, put your hand on them, Lord. And Lord, we're going to give you every bit of the glory and the honor and the praise. Because Lord, I believe you tonight. Send the rain, God. Send the rain in this dry, dry day. Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name.